Good morning. Today I wanted to discuss bringing another application's window to the forefront so that it's visible to your user. Um, this can be extremely useful when we think of automating external processes, uh, exporting data to Excel or Word or uh, starting an email, things like that, where the application doesn't always start in front of the access application. Um, I've seen some versions of Office where it did automatically, and there are other editions where it doesn't. Um, so by using a little bit of code, we can guarantee that it's in the front so that our user does see it. Because a lot of cases where you don't do this, it goes unnoticed and they may repeat the command multiple times, or they may end up calling support saying, hey, it's not working, not noticing that it did, it was just that it's in the background. So let's take a look at how we can use some simple VBA to bring a window to the front. So let's begin by looking at my article on the subject. It covers the matter in its entirety. And as the title implies, VBA, bring a window application to the front. This is a VBA solution, so it's not access specific. I'm going to use access to demonstrate it, but this will equally work in Excel, Word, Outlook, whatever the program may be, any VBA program this works. And let's just very quickly skim through this, and we're going to then run the demos, the example code. So the solution itself is very simple, as you're going to see. It's a single line, depending if you're in 32-bit or 64-bit. And this is why now I have uh, conditional compilation here, which will use the proper declaration, depending on which uh, version you're using on your computer. But basically, that is the solution in its entirety a single API that we're able to call. We'll look at it closer in a second in the VBA. Um, and then I give a couple examples, and we're going to do those two examples, automating to Excel and automating to Word, uh, just so you get a feel as to how this all works. So let's start off by the solution. Now, if you're not already familiar with APIs and how all of this works, just simply copy the code and then we're going to go into our in this case database but it could be a spreadsheet could be a word document wherever you're doing your automation and we're going to go straight into vba so into the visual basic editor the vbe we're going to create a new standard module so you have module you have class module proceed well we're going straight to a module and at the very top we paste in our api declarations and just to make things standardized, I'll put the public declaration here too. And then you can give this whatever name you want. Okay, the, the module name typically doesn't make that much of a difference, but you still want it to be something that makes sense to you that you'll be able to retrieve and find things at a later point in time. I'm just gonna call it testing. And that literally is it. We now have the API declarations in place for us to use. Now, as usual, it's always a good idea at this point to always ensure it compiles, and that's it. So what I'm going to now do, I'm going to come back to my web page, and now we're going to go down to the first example. And the first example has to do with automating Excel. So I'm launching Excel, and I want to ensure that when I launch it, that it's going to be front and center. So when I come here, I'm just going to come below the API declaration. I paste in the code. And what we're going to do, this is where it all happens. The rest of the code you've seen in multiple other examples, all it's doing here is it's going through, it's getting an instance of Excel. If it doesn't already exist, it creates one. Then it's going to make sure if it's visible or not, it's going to add a, a blank workbook it's going to go to the first sheet so it's just basic automation to ensure that we have an excel instance to then bring to the forefront um, let's make sure it's visible in this case and then to look at to use our api and you should look up here what's the api called the api is called set foreground window in both 32 and 64 bit the name doesn't change and if you look at it, it requires one input argument, one input argument. 
and that is the HWND, so the Windows handle for the application you want to bring to the foreground. Now the question then becomes, how do I get the Windows handle of the program I'm automating? And that depends on the program. If we come here, I will show you for Excel, this is the command to get the handle, the Windows Excel handle. So we just simply get it and pass it to the API, right? We're using the API, we're passing it to, so we're giving it the input argument that it wants, and it will do what it needs to do to bring it to the forefront. And this API, if you check out the documentation, it states that if it doesn't return zero, so it returns anything but zero, then it worked. Therefore, we can get its return value and check. If it returned a zero, then something didn't work. It didn't necessarily bring it to the foreground. So that's what this is here. If ever you really wanted to trap that it didn't work, this is how you do it. Just a simple if equals zero. And truthfully, in all my years, I've never had it once fail on me. But basically, this guy here, just doing this single line, will bring the instance to the forefront. So if we save it, if we debug it to make sure there are no issues, and then we simply run it, you will see that Excel will open and is brought to the forefront. And to prove it, because some people will say, oh, well, it automatically came to the forefront, we'll add a breakpoint here. Now, let's run it again. And okay, Excel, as you can see, we got the focus back on the VBE. So Excel is not in the front. Now, let's run it, make sure it goes through our set foreground window API, and it did bring it to the forefront. So that's how hard it is. You add a single API and a single line in your code, and you're done. Let's do the second example, which is the same basic idea, but with Word. So we're going to come here and we put it into our VBA, VBE module. We save it. We make sure it compiles. Everything's good. So it's the exact same thing. I'm getting an instance of Word or creating it if it doesn't exist. I'm adding a blank page. I'm setting its orientation to landscape. You really don't have to do that. I'm just demonstrating a few other things here at the same time. So you can see how easy it is to automate these external applications. But basically, at the end of the day, everything is played out exactly in the same way right here. So we have our set foreground. And how do we get the handle, the Windows handle for Word? It's exactly here, application, active window, HWND. So we pass it back, and then we can retrieve the return value from the API to find out if it worked or not. So if we just come here and run it, you will see that word will open and will come to the front. To prove it, we'll do the exact same thing. We'll come set a breakpoint and run it again. This will put focus back on the VBE. Everything's good. It is not shown. We know it's there, but it's not in our face. We're not seeing it. We want to make sure it's in our face. So we just run through and it does bring it to the front. So as you can see, as long as you're using an application that you can get the handle from easily, which Excel and Word, very easy to do, then the set window API, the set foreground window is definitely the solution. A single API, it's straightforward. You don't have to do anything more than supply a handle. The problem here is Microsoft has not standardized how you get a handle from applications. Um, if we look at here, I put a commentary at the very bottom. Um, Access, no problem, you can get the handle. Excel, you can get the handle. Publisher, you can get the handle. Word, you can get the handle. But Outlook, PowerPoint, Visio, uh, others, you, you cannot. They have not exposed a method or a property. Um, internally, they've just never standardized the way this works. Don't ask me why I'm not going there. Um, but 
this is not going to work for you for the if you have to automate let's say outlook or powerpoint or visio and that's going to be our, in our next video a part two to this which is how can we approach those types of applications and bring them to the front and that's where i have a second article that we'll discuss in the next video so i'd just like to thank you for taking the time to watch the video if you don't mind liking subscribing if you're able to promote these videos in any manner on your personal blogs and forums and uh, different network groups. Be greatly appreciated. Have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in part two.